Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. Thank you, dude. That was a heck of a stock, man. Oh, I just killed such a big bull. Dude, hey. Oh, 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 oh God. This is a freaking giant. Oh, that's freaking half of my life for that bull, dude. Oh, I'm so happy for you, dude. I'm so freaking happy for you. Happy? Oh. Is that train standing up over there? I don't know. I can't believe you hung out right here. Dude, that was just a heaven scene. Thank you, God. We got to those trees and I'm like, I'm like, if we move, we're probably gonna miss him coming across this flat. I'm like, screw it, let's get in his grill. I was trying to focus on him through some tree limbs and I barely got it and he was staring at us. I'm like, dude, you just gonna shoot. I barely got it, but just do it. Oh, I'm so proud of you, dude. Oh my God. I can't believe that just happened. I can't believe it works like that, dude. I cannot believe it works like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm just gonna, I gotta, I'm gonna sit down for a minute and just, look at this. Sun's just peeking over in this place. This place is incredible. That's, I've never Go ahead seen. And text what? <laughs> Go ahead, I need some mules. Bring the mules. <laughs> Bring the mules, old son. Was you propped up on the rock? Yeah, I was. Bi I had a bipod. I was like freaking bipod on the rock. A little, little higher than that, and I was just like this. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I can't believe I just killed a bull. I can't believe you just killed a freaking 350 bull, dude. I don't know. I don't care what he is. He's, that dude is he's, a stud. He's a bad boy. Bad. Dude, when I walked up right here and I seen him, he was looking his You're way. Like, I was like, oh my God, His dude. big old long swords. His swords are like that, dude. They're freaking huge. <laughs> I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm so glad you're you you here. That. You deserve hey, it. Hey, might get to see your wife. I might get to. I started bow hunting elk when I was 13. And... Not coming from a hunting family, I just had no where to start, and I got my butt kicked so many stinking times. And I mean, there's times solo hunting when I was like 15, and I, I'd come home and I would legitimately cry because I just it was so hard. But I think I learned so much from that between that and guiding. I'll tell you right now, for a man that's never killed a bull. You're a damn good hunter, you really are. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I have a hard time keeping up in this territory. I really do, I have a really hard time. Well, you've time. done a good job coming from, oh, what's the elevation you live at? 300. <laughs> the highest mountain we have in Oklahoma is 3,000. Oh, man. I can't believe, look how pretty this place is. It's beautiful, man. You Dude. guys are the bomb. Dude. What do you think of that? I don't think it gets any better than that. Dude, that was perfect. Nice shot, man. Oh, you guys are rock. 
Guys, oh, so, uh, oh, I'm so happy for you, man. How's it make you feel? Honestly, I mean, that's just, that's a bull worth half of my life of flying and hunting elk. And I'm so happy that you guys were here to, oh, here to experience it. Dude, we had a front row seat. We could see you. Oh. We saw you in the camera. Totally. We saw the bull, and when that bull came, and I'm like, oh, and he, he could see the smoke. He's like, oh, he shot, and I'm watching through my binos. He was like, oh. oh no, no, the, they ran, the cows ran, before we heard the shot. Like, and then I stayed on him, and he goes down. <laughs> I, we got to those trees, and I was like, if we move here, and they go across the top, we're screwed. Not that I could have really shot anyway. I'm like, screw it, let's get to that knob. And then he freaking popped this up, and he's just, I see a cow, and then he comes up, and freaking, I, going up and I'm like, I just bipod out on a rock, got on him, settled low, because, yeah, because he was like, probably 130, so I knew I was going to hit, like, a little high, I didn't range him, I'm like, he's under 200, I was going to shoot him, and I settled on him, and it just did not move, and he's like, shoot him. Well, you know, last well, last night, I, the, the, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God. Last night, we were all a little anxious. We've been hunting this bull for how many? Four days? This is the fourth day? The same bull. Uh, and there was another one you would have shot. We had two good bulls. We had two good bulls in this basin. We hunted it smart. And we prayed, Lord, if it be your will. And this morning when you shot, and then he took off, and then he started faltering, and then he went down, it was just like a huge weight. Oh, yeah. Weight, huge. Mm, totally. What do y'all think, man? I just thought, wow, my God. I tell you what, Tim this, God ain't good. Yes, for sure. He. This is one of those hunts, though, that the culmination is. It's hard to. It's hard to put it in words mm -hmm. because we've had so many stages. You know, there was that huge ultimate high when we topped over on that ridge and saw him for the first time. Yeah. And all we could do was sit in awe. Mm -hmm. And then for us to come back in here the next morning, and there's another big yeah. bull in there. Jeez. And you and I, they go after that big bull. I mean, that's how big he was to, 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 to break off of this, the six by seven, mm -hmm. to go after that straight six, but he's huge. And you and I sit and watch him all morning, mm -hmm. video of him. And then come back and you know, every night he's coming out too late, coming out too late. And we even got aggressive yesterday and worked through the timber. And all of a sudden there's just too many bulls. We don't know which one to go after because we don't know which one is him. And then the low of last night, trying to figure out logistics of you've got to head back. We've got to get Levi's batteries charged. Uh, f f you know, if we're going to hunt through, like through. Today's this morning's yeah, the morning. It's really, it's really the, the last perfect scenario. Yeah. The other ones we could have kept hunting. Oh yeah. And then to come here and see him and see him far enough to where Tanner can make the decision I'm going to be aggressive and get away with dropping off of that hill and get through these willows and get and get lined up and he's still here with his cows. I mean, it would have been nothing for all those cows to decide to be in that timber and boom. Yeah. So, that's pretty special. He was standing right by these these dead trees and I was in those trees. I I ranged it after the fact and it said 130 to the edge of that, but I see an antler. <laughs> Looks like a seven point side. Oh. Oof. Oh my gosh. Look how cool that side is. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that sucker. Look at those brows. It's official. They almost come to the front and touch. That is so cool. Couldn't have done it without him. You go through so many highs and lows in the hunt and it started to seem kind of impossible. And you know, we just, he was out here on this, in this big pretty basin and there was no, really no elk in between us this morning and we just went for it. Oh, 
so I guess that means gotta get my kill kit out because we killed the stuff. Resident antlerless says. <laughs> Oops. Uh oh. It's not really a big deal. Guess the Packers better come at night. Real sappy. Uh, split up the back? Oh, uh, no, I split up the middle. So it can... What did you feel when you walked up on him that first time? It was a tough wait, but I definitely wanted everybody to be there. And I'm super glad that you guys were all there. And I am really thankful for everyone else that contributed to this, that moment. Um, I had a lot of people that were really rooting for me and willing to help out. So, my pack, all I've got is the neck meat and what else? Straps and loins. Straps and loins. Uh, so basically, you know, the fine cuts and then the, the scraps. These guys are loading up with a hind and a front. And I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little embarrassed. But I'm glad I'm not lifting their pack. I gotta be honest. Hello, this is my <laughs> it's too much. I had too much. Oh, ass. Right. Is this way? No. What about, whichever way around the. Flat. Well, it's Malcolm, I'm around again, I'm around. Too damn skinny. I need you to do your belt. <laughs> I got it on video too. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. How do you want it? Just like that. Okay. Eric, shall we shall we don him <clears throat> or mount our? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we shall mount him. Not, not, I didn't mean mount. Are we good? You're good. Follow him. Shoes are wearable. Alright, so we got the meat all down from up top, and we put the two hindquarters in a contractor bag and submerge them in the creek. And then we stacked logs across, got the quarters and the rest of the bags just kind of hanging above the creek, and then covered them with willows um, to keep, keep the shade on them. They got about, I don't know, four more hours, and this is going to start getting real cool, and it'll be probably high 20s tonight so should be good we'll get the pack string in here and get them out pretty stoked good morning heck yeah
Is there water in there? Oh, good. That was what we were concerned with, you know. Thanks, boys. Well, we we ain't out of the woods yet. <laughs> well, kind of. We're both timberline. <laughs> yeah, there's not much wood up here. Well, besides. The Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.